Hi grade 11s, uh, welcome to today's video on freely falling objects. So freely falling objects just refers to any object that falls from a distance uh, straight down towards the ground. So again, keeping with one dimensional kinematics, this time we're working in the downwards direction. So when we're to talk about freely falling objects, we should first mention um, the acceleration due to gravity. So the speed that an object picks up as it heads towards the ground, we refer to it as acceleration due to gravity. Now, near Earth's surface, which is where we're going to be doing, well, the majority of our calculations, it has taken to be 9.81, just going to fix the size of this pen here, 9.81 meters per second squared. So this means that it's hurling towards the Earth at an acceleration of 9.81 meters, 9 meters per second every second. Now this will vary slightly due to location on Earth's surface, i.e. the latitude and the altitude that someone is at, but for the majority of kinematics problems, we can use this constant, that gravity, or g, is 9.81 meters per second down, or negative 9.81 meters per second. A couple things to note before we move forward. First of all, that since this is a vector quantity, we should note that it's taken usually as a negative value. Because it is accelerating towards the Earth in a downwards direction, towards the ground, we usually think about acceleration due to gravity if we're looking at it as a vector as negative 9.81 meters per second squared. However, if we're consistent with keeping negative vectors positive, we can use the absolute value of acceleration due to gravity to solve problems. What I mean by this, and we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later, but if I'm doing a similar problem with something hurling towards the ground, and if we're using looking at displacement, the displacement, if it's moving downwards, let's say it's moving negative 7 meters downwards. If we're looking at both acceleration and displacement in this problem, if we keep them both positive, just to kind of alleviate any sort of confusion, so we do positive 9.81 meters per second squared times positive 7, for example, right? It would be the same as saying negative 9.81 times negative 7. Both will yield a positive answer. As long as you can uh, rec uh, recognize that they're both be moving in a negative direction, and that ultimately the answer is that the object is moving downwards, we can use this. But we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Now the second is uh, acceleration due to gravity, or the gravity constant, is still an object, uh, oh, sorry, an example of uniformly accelerated linear motion. Because no matter where you're on, on Earth, is it's usually consistently around negative 9.81 meters per second down, accelerating in a linear motion. Now we can use any of those four physics equations that we previously derived, and just substitute the A from them with G for acceleration due to gravity. So for example, in our acceleration equals a change in velocity over time, we can simply uh, substitute, substitute sorry, G in there. Same thing with equation C we derived the other day, and equation D we derived the other day. So G can just be used as a substitute for A. Now it should be noted that in kinematics, in one dimension, at this point in physics, we're not going to take into account drag or air resistance when describing freely falling objects uh, at this level. So that is, you know, if we have a large object and a smaller object like a feather, for now, we're going to treat them as if we're looking at a no air resistance situation. So that there's no air resistance that act, that's acting upwards on these objects. We're just right now going to be focused on the acceleration due to gravity downwards. Let's take a look at a couple examples of when we might use this type of situation. So, in this case we have a basketball that's dropped from the top of a 12 meter building. What we want to do is we want to find the velocity of which this object will strike the floor. Okay, so what I like to do when I'm looking at a physics equation is I like to make myself a given fine table and usually draw a diagram to help me sort of understand what's going on in this. So what I'm given is I'm given that the displacement of this building or the displacement of this ball is going to be, let's fix my pen again, is going to be negative 12 meters. Because it's going down from this building, so I'll draw my diagram to help me kind of explain. It's going to be going down from this building 12 meters. 
I also know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And I also know my initial velocity is zero. Because if it's starting from the top of the building, it's unlikely that this ball is starting uh, from a moving position. We can assume that in this case the ball is just being dropped from a resting start. What we want to find is the object that this, uh, the, sorry, the velocity the object strikes the floor. So we want to find the velocity just before it hits the floor. What we don't have, or we don't have any need for in this problem, is time. We're not concerned with time in this problem. So I don't need any equation that has anything to do with time. So if I'm thinking, if I look back on my sheet, the equation I'm probably likely going to use for this is one that has velocity final, velocity initial, gravity or acceleration, and displacement, and doesn't need time. So if I'm looking, I'm looking for equation D we grabbed the other day. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. So now it's just about substituting. We know vi squared, well my initial velocity is 0, so that will be 0 squared, plus 2. We know a can be substituted for g, the acceleration due to gravity, 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared, times the displacement, 12 meters. Now again, because I know this is negative 9.81 and this is negative 12, I don't need to uh, put the negatives in there because I know I'm just going to be multiplying them together so I'm keeping the vectors consistent. So if I can ignore that zero then I'm left with uh, 2 times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 12 meters which gives me if I plug it in my calculator about 235.44 meters squared seconds squared and that is my Vf squared. So in order to solve for velocity final, I take the square root of both sides, take the square root there, I can cancel out this square root here, I can cancel out these square roots here, and what I'm left with is my final velocity is 15.3 meters per second. So I can say if this object is accelerating from a 12 meter tall building at uh, the acceleration due to gravity 9.81 meters per second squared, that just before it reaches the bottom of this, it will be going at a speed of 15.3 meters per second. Now, I made a bit of an oopsie here, because velocity is a vector, so I need to say that it is 15.3 meters per second down. So I'd like you guys to try the problem, uh, the practice problem just below. Uh, write down any questions you might have for me next day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.